Telecom is Germany's third largest mobile network operator by customer number. However, it is generally considered to be by far the best performing mobile network based on independent benchmark tests by organizations like P3. In my personal road tests and sort of walk tests I was doing while on holiday in Germany, I found that Telecom did perform very well in the most part thanks to their sort of well designed and engineered network deployment. Spectrum wise, Telecom has quite a wide portfolio of different frequencies. So working from lower frequencies to higher frequencies, they have 10 megahertz paired of 700 megahertz, which isn't currently deployed anywhere. They have 10 megahertz paired of 800 megahertz, which is used for 4G predominantly in rural areas, but in some urban areas as well. Then they have 15 megahertz paired of 900 megahertz, which is mainly used for 2G. However, it is used for 4G in some areas with a 5 megahertz carrier bandwidth. Initially starting and sort of being largely deployed around the Bonn area. However, I did find it in other parts of Germany. Telecom does also have 20 megahertz of single downlink spectrum, which is roughly on the 1500 megahertz band but that has not been deployed yet either, so far as I know. Next up is the 1800 megahertz band, which Telecom has 30 megahertz paired of, and this is used primarily for 4G services, with 20 megahertz band with the 4G, leaving 10 megahertz for 2G in some areas. However, once again in Bonn, there was 30 megahertz of 4G deployed and 1800 megahertz in two carriers. So a 20 megahertz carrier, and a 10 megahertz carrier. So a lot of band three sort of 4G deployed there. The only band that Telecom does not have a lot of spectrum in is the 2100 megahertz band, for which they've got under 10 megahertz of spectrum, which still does allow them to run two carriers. However, compared to Vodafone and especially O2, it's not very much 2100 megahertz spectrum at all. In the 2600 megahertz department, they have 20 megahertz paired of FDD, and this is deployed primarily in quite urban high load locations, and they also have a tiny little bit of 2600 megahertz TDD spectrum as well. Now that we've seen the spectrum that Telecom has deployed in Germany, we can now move on to have a look at what Telecom's masts look like from a sort of visual perspective and an RF layout one. As with the Vodafone Germany video, I will be covering the example telecom masts in ascending 4G capacity order in order to make it a little bit more comprehensible. The schematics and technologies stated resemble what the masts were broadcasting at the time, however in lieu of telecom re-farming 900MHz from 2G to 4G, in the near future some of these masts will be moving from G09 to GL09, where G equals GSM, so 2G, U equals UMTS, so 3G, and L equals LTE, so 4G. So the first mast that I'm going to cover is low band only, and it, therefore it is 2G and 4G because Germany doesn't use 900 MHz for 3G. So this mast has 900 megahertz 2G and 4G on 800 megahertz using two single band antennas, one for the 900 megahertz 2G and one for the 800 megahertz 4G. This is a very rural site, so you can see that it is using Nokia RIUs on it for telecom. In Germany, telecom has Huawei in urban areas and Nokia in rural ones broadly, but again there are lots of exceptions to that. These telecom RIU images also demonstrate a way for us to readily recognise masts and equipment that is broadcasting telecom signal, in that the cables have quite bright vibrant yellow tags on them, which clearly marks that the mast is telecom.
The next mast is very similar to this one in that it is broadcasting 900 megahertz 2G and 800 megahertz 4G. However, it is using dual band antennas as opposed to multiple single band antennas. Next up is a mast with, once again, only 4G on the 800 megahertz band, but this one also has a high band component, 3G 2100 megahertz, to also complement the 2G 900 megahertz. So it's much the same as the mast before, however, it has 3G 2100 megahertz and is using a triple band antenna. And this is a very common Catherine antenna, which I see very commonly in the UK as well as Europe. Unsurprisingly, with Catherine being a leading antenna manufacturer based in Germany, it's not surprising that Catherine antennas are used very extensively by telecom, as well as the other mobile network operators, like we saw in the Vodafone Germany video. The next step up from these masts with 10 megahertz of 4G carrier bandwidth is the mast with 15 megahertz of 4G carrier bandwidth, which use the 10 megahertz of 800 megahertz 4G and add 5 megahertz of 900 megahertz 4G. Now these masts are quite rare and actually typically look exactly the same as a mast with just 4G 800 and the 900 megahertz being used for 2G because it's a software refarm really. So a mast carrying 900 megahertz 2G can look exactly the same as a mast carrying 900 megahertz 2G and 4G. Therefore, the next main focus stepping up this capacity ladder is of masts which have 1800 megahertz 4G, which is usually a 20 megahertz 4G carrier bandwidth. Some of these can also have 4G 900 megahertz on them, bringing that bandwidth up to 25 megahertz, or even they can have the full 30 megahertz of 1800 megahertz 4G and 900 megahertz 4G. The most common configuration looks something like this, where the top antenna is old looking, once again in Catherine antenna, which is used for 900 megahertz, and the antenna below, which is a dual high band Catherine antenna, is then used for the 3G 2100 and 4G 1800 megahertz. The antennas aren't always on top of each other, they can be side by side. And this next setup uses once again that old sort of old looking Catherine antenna for 900 megahertz and then a triple band antenna of unknown origin for the 3G 2100 and 4G 1800 megahertz with also two spare ports for an additional high band frequency like 2600 megahertz in future. Meanwhile, this example uses a single low band antenna and a quad band Huawei antenna with two bands in use. Slightly odd example which provides a huge amount of expansion capabilities for the future. But yeah, again, it's a bit odd. It doesn't in there, it doesn't have a Catherine antenna on it. And there are so many sorts of bands available for future expansion on this one. There is also a type of mast carrying this GO9U21L18, which uses a triple band antenna, fairly similarly to the triple band Catherine antenna that we saw previously doing GO9U21L08. However, of course, this one has two high bands as opposed to two low bands in use. The next step up from having 4G 1800 MHz with or without additionally 4G 900 megahertz is to add 4G 800 megahertz. So in other words, you get the 10 megahertz of 4G 800 megahertz plus the 20 to 30 megahertz of 4G 1800 megahertz and also potentially plus the 5 megahertz of 4G 900 megahertz as well. However, on the your run of the mill, Mast, it will be the 30 megahertz split between 10 of 800 and 20 of 1800. Now these typically use two dual band Catherine antennas. Each antenna has a low band and a high band, 
So in total between the two antennas, we've got two low bands and two high bands, which obviously matches the 900 megahertz being low, 800 megahertz being low, and 1800 and 2100 each being high band. Once again, as I said, these can, in some cases, be broadcasting 4G 900 megahertz as well, due to the multi-mode nature of the base stations. This following example is rather interesting in that it is high band only. There is no 900 megahertz frequency deployed on this mast. So it's got the 3G 2100 megahertz, 4G 1800 megahertz, and 4G 2600 megahertz. It's no 900, so there can't be any 4G 900 megahertz, and there's no 4G 4G 800 megahertz here either. It's one of those odd triple band antennas being used by telecom that I don't really know the vendor of at this point in time. Of course, with full 1800 megahertz refarm, this could still be broadcasting 50 megahertz or 4G carrier bandwidth. The next step up from this is clearly to add 900 megahertz to the mast. And the way this is generally done is, or the simple way it's done is using a quad band antenna which has the 900 megahertz, the 2100 megahertz, the 1800 megahertz and the 2600 megahertz each you know going into one antenna per sector which is all very nice and simple. Sometimes it is split across different panels at different heights or side by side so for example this example where 900 megahertz is using one cathrine antenna at one level and then there's another Catherine antenna at another level carrying the remainder of the frequencies. I also came across this example which has a whole variety of different antennas on it for some unknown reason. And once again though it is carrying the same as the previous two examples I stated. The final examples to talk about are carrying all of the frequencies basically. So 800 MHz, 900 MHz, 1800 MHz, 2100 MHz, and 2600 MHz. And both examples use two antennas per sector. The first one uses a dual high band cathrine antenna for 2100 MHz and 2600 MHz with a triple band antenna below for the 900 MHz 8 100 megahertz and 1800 megahertz and the final example has a dual band cathrine antenna and a triple band cathrine antenna which therefore split the high band and the low band between the two antennas because each antenna has got high band and low bands they're not just high band or just low band antennas with an example like this carrying all of the paired FDD spectrum you are looking at a lot of 4G capacity potentially with 5 on 900, 10 on 800, 20 to 30 on 1800 and 20 on 2600 that's a lot of spectrum potentially so what 65 megahertz of 4G spectrum which is a lot Thanks for watching this video about Telecom Germany's masts with their sort of RF layouts. It has been quite an interesting video to make and Telecom Germany's network is fairly interesting. The next video will probably be O2 Germany because clearly the video before this one was Vodafone Germany. Which should be quite an interesting video to make as well because O2 fairly recently merged with the fourth German network which was called E+. And that's been quite a complicated network merge, consolidation, recolor, and so on. One of the, I guess, beneficial results of the merge is that O2 Germany has an incredible amount of spectrum, especially in the 2100 MHz band, where they can run up to seven carriers of 3G, which is pretty incredible, really. That's a lot of carriers on 3G. And they also have a lot of spectrum on other bands as well. I plan to do a write-up on my website of these kind of videos in page form for people who don't particularly like watching videos. So I'll probably link that below. And also I do plan to subtitle these German mass videos in German. However, once again, that will be very time consuming with the length and 
sort of technical specific language in these videos. So um, thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next video.